So uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, one of the more important checkmates in chess, which is the so-called smothered mate. You should be familiar with, first of all, what the smothered checkmate is, and also with typical patterns and situations where you can use the, the you can apply the smothered uh, mate. So first of all, the smothered mate is a checkmate delivered by a knight in which the mated king is unable to move because he is surrounded by his own pieces. So that maybe doesn't make so much sense to you right now and you cannot visualize it. So the best thing to do is let's actually show some positions where a checkmate arises. In this first video, what I want to show you is some situations where it, a smothered mate can arise very quickly out of the opening. So the first example is in the opening known as the Karo Can. After e4, c6, and here white plays d4, and black responds with d5. The pawn is under attack, white defends the pawn, and now black captures the pawn on e4. White captures the pawn back on e4, and here black, one of the main options that he has, is the so-called Karpov variation, named after former world champion Anatoly Karpov. He really liked to play this move, but there is a danger. And a trap that thousands of players have fallen into involves threatening smothered mate. Can you see what move white can play here that will threaten checkmate in one with smothered mate? Feel free to pause the video if you'd like. So the move is the sneaky move queen to e2. This x-rays the king. And now do you see what the threat is of smothered mate? Let's imagine that black plays some natural move like, for example, knight to f6. Black develops one of his pieces. This would be a disaster because now, because this pawn is, part, is along the e-file, white can play knight d6. And that is checkmate. We see that the king cannot move anywhere because it's surrounded by its own pieces. And the knight cannot be captured because if you try to capture it, you see that your king would be in check. So that is an illegal move. And this is why such a checkmate is called the smothered mate, because the king is smothered by its own pieces. Since in this video we are focusing on smothered mates out of the opening, let me show you another couple of situations where very early on uh, one side can threaten a smothered mate. Let's go back to the starting position. Now let's take a look at a second example of a smothered mate. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5 marks the so-called Spanish opening or the Ruy Lopez. Here after the move knight to f6, white defends his pawn on e4. Now black should play, you know, some normal move like bishop c5, developing move. But if black wants to be sneaky, he can play the move knight to e7, but it backfires because white takes this pawn on e5. And now black's idea is to play the move pawn to c6, attacking this bishop. If the bishop moves, then black will give a check and he will fork the king and knight, and the knight will be lost. But white, in this position, decides to be sneaky back, and he plays the move knight to c4. Now, if black gets carried away with this bishop being attacked and captures the bishop, we see another smothered checkmate on the board. Knight d6, once again, the king is hemmed in by its own pieces, and it's game over, and... Uh, white has won a very, very fast game. So those are uh, a couple of situations from the white side, but one and the final example that I will show in the opening, one of the most common smothered mates that occurs in tournament practice is actually from the black side. So let's take a look at that smothered mate. The smothered mate occurs after the moves pawn to d4, a queen's pawn opening, knight f6, c4, and e5. This is the so-called Budapest gambit. 
after pawn takes e5, black plays knight g4 to attack the pawn on e5. Now, white defends the pawn with bishop f4, and black attacks the pawn again with knight to c6. White defends the pawn once again, and black here gives a check on b4. Now, white could develop the knight to c3, but sometimes they're afraid that they will get these bad doubled pawns. So, many players, they will go knight to d2. Here, black plays queen e7, attacking the pawn on e5. White goes a3, attacking the bishop, and black pretends that he has forgotten all about his bishop and he's too busy capturing the pawn. This trick works especially well if you're playing uh, fast games of chess, like blitz chess or even bullet chess online. If here white doesn't spot the smothered mate and captures the bishop on b4, then after knight d3, it's all of a sudden game over. Smothered mate from the black side, it's a very similar idea to what we saw from the white side. Here, white cannot capture the knight because of the queen on e7, and white cannot move his king because he's hemmed in or smothered by his own pieces. So this has been an introduction to what the smothered mate is and a few very practical examples that, that can occur really early on in the opening. They're worth knowing and worth remembering because if you want, you can try and catch out your opponents in these uh, openings. And if not, then at least hopefully you will avoid falling victim to these traps that have claimed thousands of lives over the years on the chessboard. So um, hope you enjoyed this video and we will have another video showing uh, a couple of different types of smothered mates. Um, so please check that out if you've enjoyed this video.